Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Deppi, and I am uh, honored to represent UC Irvine and our brand new esports program. Yes. Thank you all for coming. My office is just upstairs, actually. So today I want to talk to you about the future of competitive video gaming on college campuses. Do we have any gamers out there? Anyone play video game? Awesome. So we're really excited. We just announced and launched the first competitive video gaming program at a public school in North America. And for those of you who don't know what esports is, esports is this cultural phenomenon that's happened really over the last decade or so that surrounds the world of video games. So it's the, it's the competition, it's the community, and it's the entertainment aspects of this. And so you'll see millions of people coming together. So we know now, as I mentioned, it's huge. So esports is sexy right now. It's, it's evolved past this picture right now <laughs> into this massive worldwide thing. And Riot Games just announced that 100 million people are now playing League of Legends every month. That's over 1% of the human population plays one game. And in fact, here's the, here's the World Championships three years ago. This is uh, uh, Staples Center. It sold out in 10 minutes. And the viewership for this, unique viewers worldwide, exceeded that of the final game of the World Series combined with the NBA Finals that year. So it's absolutely massive. And we are just at the very beginning of this explosive growth. The esports is the information revolution's answer to traditional athletics. It's the next evolution of competition. And so it makes sense for us to start thinking about and what's the next step and why, why should we care about it. So I'm going to offer a few predictions about it because I hear a lot of speculation and now that I've been involved with it for a year or so, uh, I'd like to offer what I think. So first of all, there's a lot of natural uh, connections between esports and traditional athletics and the word sports is in esports. So we, we want to initially draw a comparison. So obviously there's, there's massive training, thousands of hours going to training. You have coaches, you have analysts, you have all the same roles that you see in traditional sports. They may be, might be in front of a computer, but, it, but it essentially it's very, very similar. Um, additionally, some of the biggest new investors into esports are now professional sports players. Shaq's got a pro team. Rick Fox has a pro team. Last week, in fact, two NBA teams announced that they had just bought professional esports franchises. So the biggest difference, though, I want to really stress today is the intellectual property associated with video games. And this is absolutely going to be what differentiates the future of esports from what we see in traditional sports. Video game companies own every aspect of their video game and will control, if they want to, and they should, all aspects of their game from who plays it, what rules, and how it's distributed. So this is the first group of people that matter in esports are the game developers. And there's lots of them. They're ever-changing. And uh, as a new game comes out, it can, it can over, I guess, overrule or supersede the, the game companies that came before it. And they're going to act predictably. They are going to do what I think is in their best interest, which is to make money for their, their shareholders. So they are, if they have the ability, and they do, because they own the intellectual property, they're going to try to monetize all the different areas of it. So if they have a competition, they're going to make money off it, distribution as well. The other group that matters in esports is the crowd, the, the gaming community. It's the mob. It's the people on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Reddit. These are the people buying the product. These are the people that uh, only, these are the only people that the game companies are beholden to, to make happy. So, uh, they're important. And actually, they are the grassroots group that created esports. It was not founded by a CEO. No CEO said, you will all play Tetris competitively. That was not how it worked. They would love to do that, but it's really a grassroots, bottoms-up organization. But once the community has selected a game and said, this is an esport, we want to compete, it's really up to the video game companies to set the rules, to set the guidelines. And so it's this interesting equilibrium between game companies and the community go back and forth to find out what works. So we see this this yin and yang kind of relationship between the community who elevates something to an esports status and the game companies who have to kind of foster that ecosystem. And so a lot of people are curious uh, uh, how, how this works and how this interacts with traditional sports. And also because of this grassroots nature, you are not going to see groups or people who are used to this top-down hierarchical structure like the NCAA or TV companies. They are not going to be involved in esports, um, and that's just my personal strong opinion. Um, but uh, you still do have that monopoly kind of feel with the video game companies controlling their product. But now instead of the NCAA having the monopoly over all sports, it's actually be a little more interesting with multiple video game companies kind of controlling each of their own elements. So with that said, my first prediction is we do need to create some sort of ecosystem or some sort of rules to govern esports at a collegiate and professional level. But I think it's going to be a combination of people coming around the table, the gaming community, and the, uh, the companies to establish best practices. And initially, I think it'll be a kind of an opt-in practice. Prediction number two, 
Esports are going to continue to grow. I think they will supersede traditional sports sooner rather than later in overall popularity. I'll bet anyone money that they will be at the 2020 Olympics in, uh, in Japan. Um, and so uh, I, th I think they're going to continue to grow and just absolutely uh, blow stuff out. My last prediction, because I love my, my Anteater family, my new League of Legends team, I'm predicting that in the next four years we will win a national title. We will be invited to the White House by President Clinton, and we will get to meet and take a picture with the first female president of the United States. Thank you.